Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. I hope everyone's weekend is off to a great start. And today we are going to be talking about the very sad case, and I know that this case is going to upset a lot of you, but we're going to talk about it and we're going to talk about how this could possibly be avoided in the future. Today we're going to be talking about the disappearance of James Jacob. He went by Jake Dutton, and he disappeared on June 15th of 2012. In, on the French Pete Trail just south of Cougar Lake and this is in the Three Sisters Wilderness of Oregon and it kind of sits the Three Sisters Wilderness of Oregon it's a very popular place to go it's kind of nestled in between Bend and Eugene Oregon but it's in a very thick forested area with huge cedar trees and all kinds of um, firs and this area in particular, Three Sisters, once you get into the trail, especially this French Peat Trail, it's very rugged, it's very dense. Uh, there's a lot of foliage and fauna, uh, especially when you get deeper into the summer months. Now, this take, took place in mid-June, and from what I understand, in Oregon, the best times to hike it are between July and mid-September, because in June, you're still facing a lot of rain, depending on the season. But these this this area this three sisters it has a lot of animals wildlife beautiful flowers blooming like i said tons of huge cedar trees but unfortunately it is a very rugged and dense area so people do get into trouble because that nice weather can turn very sour very quickly especially in months like june and this is from what my research said because i've never actually been to the three sisters wilderness but jacob was uh jake was a very experienced young man i mean he was only 32 years old at the time when this happened he was living in eugene oregon he was a veteran of the u.s coast guard and he had studied this special alternative medical services it was a a special type of physical therapy for pain relief and he was very experienced in it and he had done a lot of things in his life up to this point and he was a very experienced hiker and camper and unfortunately he was also uh, at times like just a very uh, solo guy he liked to take time to himself and it's thought that he drove out to the trail now the last time he was actually seen was on june 3rd he drove his truck out and he got a permit for this French Peak Trail for the Three Sisters Wilderness and his permit was good between June 15th and June 18th. Now here's where kind of this is where the story kind of falls apart because it is very sad what happened because it could have been avoided in my opinion. As you can see in the pictures, the trail is very steep and rugged, or maybe it's hard to tell in the pictures, but it's very steep. It's only about 15 miles, the French Bee Trail, in length, and the elevation gain is about 4,800 feet, but there's a lot of tall cliffs and huge rocks, and it's just a very treacherous climb, especially as it gets more dense. Now, roughly, the temperatures while he was there ranged between a low of 40 degrees and a high of 70 degrees, so still not that warm. I mean, it wasn't crazy hot. It's thought that he went there to scout camping trips. His uh, nephew was coming into town at the end of the month, and he was actually supposed to pick him up at the airport. And this is important, so to remember that. And he was going to pick his nephew up, and they were going to go to a family reunion. And then after that family reunion, they were going to come camping. And he was going to take him potentially camping in this Three Sisters wilderness. Unfortunately, due to the fact that Jake lived alone and he was generally thought he was generally known to be a very secretive person, no one really knew his plans. In fact, actually, no one did know his plans. And his mother, Cynthia, she began to worry sometime in mid June. She called to remind him about uh, picking up his uh, nephew and his brother's uh, birthday that was coming up. And unfortunately, she could not reach him. Now, she knew. Could always have his cell phone but unfortunately she couldn't get him then on june 28th that was when jake had agreed to pick up his nephew at the portland airport and he failed to show up now this is when jake's brother knew something was wrong he went to his apartment and found uh the sign no sign of him and he reported him missing on july 9th keep these dates in mind now the last time jake was seen was on june 3rd and his permit in the wilderness was from June 15th to June 18th. 
and he wasn't reported missing until July 9th. I mean, that's, that's really, I mean, even if you had a few extra days of supplies, unless you were a really, really rugged outdoorsman, the odds of surviving for almost a month out in the wilderness with nothing is pretty tough. So, but unfortunately nobody really knew his plans. And it wasn't until three weeks later when the report, which of course had all the information on his truck, the license plate number, the they found his truck, which was a blue Nissan truck. They found it on July 30th in near, I'm gonna have a map up, on Forest Route 19, near the trailhead for the French Pete, off of this road, Mackenzie Pass, and I'm not going to say this right, but offer the name Memorial Drive. Like I said, I'll have a map up. Inside the truck, there wasn't any really clues. There was his boat wasn't there, his inflatable boat wasn't there. Nothing was there except for the truck. But can you imagine? This truck wasn't found till July 30th. That means it had been sitting there from June 13th, at least two and a half weeks. Now. When I put up the map, you'll see it's a pretty busy intersection. And it's hard for me to believe that all these forest rangers and other people had passed this truck for six weeks and no one called it in. That to me was one of the first big upsetting thing. Obviously, it's upsetting that Jake didn't tell any of his family members what he was doing because that could have prevented this whole thing too. There's a lot of things that we can learn from the story, but this is where it starts you know, to build. The, the friction, so to speak, between the family and the forest officials and all the authorities because the family felt like the forest officials weren't really putting enough into this and they were frustrated that they couldn't figure out that his permit had expired weeks ago and that his truck was sitting there on the road for weeks and vice versa the authorities were frustrated with the family because they had no knowledge of jake's plan they couldn't give the authorities any starting points or any information so unfortunately because of that only two searches involving uh, actual authorities, law enforcement, volunteers, search and rescue dogs took place on July 30th and August 5th. And at that, by that point, I mean, we're talking six weeks out and they found no signs of Jake during those searches. I mean, they did their best, but by that point in that area, it is all overgrown. It's, you know, everything is full up. And I'm not surprised that by that point they couldn't find him. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And I know that the volunteers that did go out, they put a, put a lot into it. But when you're starting that far out, it's, it's going to be a miracle unless the person went out and then left on their own accord or went out and took their own life. Now, this was something that the forced... And the authorities suggested to the family. The family said, no way. Jake was happy. He did have moments of depression, but hey, everyone does. It wasn't like he had would ever do anything like that. He was overall a very happy young man. And he had plans in the work. He had works. He had his family reunion to go to. He was going to bring his nephew back here to go camping. And those aren't actions of pe persons that are suicidal. People that are suicidal, unless it's a, you know, a, an act of panic or a gesture, they usually aren't making plans in the future. And that was something that upset the family too. They they felt it was offensive that the authorities were saying like, oh, he probably just went up there and took his own life. But unfortunately, after that search ended in August, that was pretty much the end of it. And no one heard from Jake again, and that was pretty much the end of his investigation. There was no other searches. There was nothing until four year, almost four years later, and a hiker was out in the Three Sisters Wilderness just hiking, and he found Jake's remains on August 24th of 2016, about 100 feet off the French Peat Trail, and they were about four miles from the trailhead, which is, you know, so frustrating. So whatever happened, he was only four miles from the trailhead and 100 feet off trail. So, of course, he, this hiker, immediately contacted the authorities. The authorities came out. Now, his remains were found near his backpack, two cans of bear spray, and it was in a very steep, heavily forested area. Now, from what the medical examiner and everybody that examined him they said his pants were still on but his torso was bare so he wasn't wearing a shirt when whatever happened happened they said that there was no evidence of trauma no wounds 
nothing that would suspect anything from foul play. It just seemed that he was maybe sitting there. Obviously, it's probably never going to be known what happened because from those after so many years past, the medical examiners, they can't determine because so much time and so many seasons, winters, falls, springs have gone over this remains. And unfortunately, we'll probably never know. I mean, it's it, the fact that they even found him was a miracle. I'm sure the family was gr happy to have closure to bring him home and give him a proper burial. The authorities ultimately concluded that Jake must have died of hypothermia. However, I disagree with this conclusion. I feel like Jake most likely, he was a very experienced hiker. He had served in you know, our US Coast Guard. He was an experienced young man and this was not his first time out in the wilderness. And I think it's most likely that he maybe suffered an injury. And I'm just hoping and praying that whatever happened, happened on the last day of his adventure. So at least he got three days of doing something that he loved and i mean because if it happened on the first day and he was out there just you know with a broken ankle or whatever something you know from a fall where he couldn't move forward or get help it just breaks my heart and i think this just by reading his credentials and everything about him i just feel like he would have known how to start a fire if he needed to he would have known how to signal for help he had protection from bears i feel like it was a fall or something like that that because of this area that was so steep and rugged, he just ended up taking a bad fall and getting injured to the point where he couldn't move on. And that's just a theory. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'd love to hear your theories if you have them, because this whole situation, I feel like, could have been avoided. I'm not blaming anyone, even pointing fingers, but I feel like on both sides, if people had done things differently, this situation could have been avoided. And it pains me that he only got two searches. I do understand that though because they didn't realize it until almost seven weeks out and by that point I mean the fact is that the odds of survival are very very slim even for somebody that is very well trained unless you had proper gear and really knew how to survive in the wilderness but at the same time it is very sad and who knows it, it could be something as simple as he was trying to cross a stream and he ended up falling and in that case at, when night, night came, if he didn't have the proper you know, sleeping gear or ways to dry his clothing, he could have become hypothermic. So that is a possibility. I mean, I, I'm not discrediting it altogether, but I don't know. I just It's always bothersome how they don't give more details. But I, I understand and I respect the family's privacy and I understand that. I'm glad he was able to be brought home and I'm saluting him as a member of our U.S. Coast Guard and thanking him for uh, his service and everything that he did while he was serving in the U.S. Coast Guard. And we can learn from this case and we can learn that no matter how big or small the trip is, leave a detailed itinerary with at least two different people, people that are living in different residences. Pack extra clothing, a puffy jacket, extra pair of socks, things that you can, uh, something that you can use to, my uh, recommendation is always something like a Garmin inReach or a person location beacon. I like the Garmin inReach because no matter where you are, even if you don't have cell service, you can communicate with family members. And they have other ones too, different satellite devices where you can do that. But if you're going to be getting into solo hiking, I highly recommend getting something like that. It is well worth the, the initial investment and they have different plans you can use. And also, I just think it's important that in these areas that people keep their eyes open because it's just hard for me to believe that people drove by this. I mean, granted, it's not a crazy busy intersection, but it's off of a main highway and it's right where the car was found. It was only, you know, a few hundred feet off of that turn. And it's just hard for me to believe that all these people would drive by it and no one would say anything. I mean, even up here where I live, if somebody's car is off the road for a certain amount of time, people will call it in after a few days. And make sure you do your research. If you're going into a new area or even an area that you've been in before, research it because according to the Lane County Sheriff's Department, this area of the Lane County Mountains and the, Wil the Three Sisters Wilderness, it's a very, unfortunately, despite how beautiful it is and how popular it is, it's also one of the most places where the most people end up disappearing. I think it was something like in the last 40 years, 30 people have disappeared just in that area alone. And that is a very high number. And it's sad, but it just, you know, it gives you 
You should plan ahead, make sure you have maps, a compass, and like I said, the BBL, but that's just my opinion. I want to dedicate this video to Jake Dutton, his friends, his family, everyone who knew him and loved him for his service in the U.S. Coast Guard. And I hope that you're resting in peace. And I just wanted to tell his, share his story because I just thought it could hopefully prevent another tragedy like this from happening. I want to thank you all for watching, as always, and please be respectful in the comments if you choose to leave them. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I know this was a tough case. It was a tough case to both research and to talk about. Every time I would read another article, it just pained me. I was like, Jake, just leave one note for somebody. Leave one message for one of your family members. Or I wish there was a ranger that was driving by and saw his truck because once I saw that it was that amount of time, I knew it was the odds were slim. But I want to thank everybody for watching and being so kind to me and following along my channel. I really appreciate all your comments that you leave. And I am trying to get back to everybody, but it's just been hard with limited devices, but hopefully I'll have the email back up and running next week and we can get more of that going. And if you guys have any comments or feedback for me, you can always just leave it in the comment section or send me a message to my PayPal account, which is also linked in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. We are celebrating National Black History Month here in the United States. So in the next few videos, I'll be talking about it in the beginning. So throughout the next month's videos, or this, the rest of these month's videos, I'll be talking about different historical events that happened here in the United States. But I'd love to hear from you guys too, and maybe things that happen locally or in your countries or in your towns. So definitely leave me a comment and let me know.